When the original Borderlands came out back in 2009, people praised it for its excellent addictive gunplay, the Diablo-style progression of loot and upgrades, and its unique art style. But it wasn't without faults from reusing enemy types, padding out the game with lengthy fetch quests, the artificial intelligence of monsters not being that great, and a lot of the same environments being explored again and again. Gearbox smartly decided to remedy this by developing four DLCs for the original Borderlands to expand its universe and offer a new challenge to players and of course, more loot. These included the zombie island of Dr. Ned, a zombie themed add-on, Mad Moxie's Underdome Riot, which was your arena wave style of combat, the secret armory of General Knox, which carried on the original story of Borderlands, and of course, Claptrap's new robot revolution, which carried on Claptrap's story. With the release of Borderlands 2 last year, Gearbox decided to release the game with a season pass for the first four pieces of DLC content for the game, spread across its first year of the release. We've currently gotten three out of the four pieces of content, and with the last piece coming out at the end of June, I decided there was no better time than now to try them out. So here's my review of the first three pieces of DLC. First up, Captain Scarlet and her pirate booty. Roll the trailer! A long time ago, there was a big pile of treasure in the desert, and the Volt Hunters found it and killed all the bad guys. The end. No, 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 that's not how you start a story. I thought it was pretty good. And I think you're not getting fed this week. Now, this is how you start a story. Legends speak of Captain Blade's lost treasure of the sands, of a prize so great that men would turn their sands red in pursuit of it, of a pirate queen, courageous and deadly, who would stop at nothing to find it, of a monstrous leviathan, of the vault hunters who journeyed to the desert town of Oasis, not knowing the horrors that would befall them. See? That's how you do it. Mine was more succinct. Your life's gonna be succinct, you dirty little orphan. With a heavy theme of treasure hunting, pirates and a slight nod to Star Wars, Captain Scarlet begins in the lovely town of Oasis, which is home to one of the most disturbing crazed characters in Borderlands history, Shade. Oasis isn't the most booming of towns since it has a drought problem and a lot of corpses, and soon come to realise this add-on harkens back to the original Borderlands with scrapyards and the deserts of old. You'll soon encounter Captain Scarlet who has some trust issues, not with you, but everyone, and she likes a good backstab, but she needs your help to find the legendary treasure of Captain Blade. It soon becomes apparent you need to assemble a compass that will lead you to the treasure. This means raiding the iconic bandit camp spread across the new desert area looking for the compass. For the add-on, the bandits have been given a pirate themed V-skin and with fancy new names and a couple of new abilities. But you soon come to realise this is just a fresh look of paint and it hasn't shaken the combat up that much. The only exceptions are the new V-skin Goliaths called Anchorman who no longer go berserk but carry massive anchors which they can use to grapple you into melee combat. The only other new enemy is a pirate skeleton who will leech the health off you if it gets it enclosed for melee combat. And that's about it. This is when you realise this expansion isn't all it's cracked up to be and offers nothing new to the series. Even the inclusion of the Star Wars style skiffs can't save it from the boredom you will enjoy, which is a shame. The enemies you will encounter will scale to your level but not past level 30, which you will have passed by the time you've finished the original game, so you will feel overpowered in this add-on. There are some boss fights in the game as well, but they don't offer a whole lot of challenge. The second to last boss, I stood still and I just shot him dead where it stood. The end boss was a joke and I didn't even feel like I got hit once. The loot you find doesn't really scale with your level either, so you could go through the whole add-on and not find one single upgrade for your character. There's a new level 50 boss in the add-on to tackle for hardened players, but for anyone going through for the first time, they won't be able to tackle it. This was the first piece of DLC to come out for Borderlands 2, a month after its release. I think they should have spent more time developing some new enemies and actually scaling it to your level, and it would have been a lot more fun. However, with an uninteresting story and jokes falling flat half the time, this pirate theme add-on might as well have stayed in David Jones' locker alongside Mad Moxie's Under Dome's Riot. Next up, Mr. Torg's Campaign of Carnage. Roll the trailer! Listen carefully, mouth breathers of the world. This is Patricia Tannis, and I have found another vault. As you may know, the opening of the first vault five years ago triggered a chain reaction that revealed more from Pandora. Boring! You don't want to hear about that, vault hunter! You want to hear about loot and packs and explosions! I'm Tori, and I'm here to ask you one question, and one question only. Explosions? 
off this echo frequency, you protein-guzzling buffoon! I'm trying to convey- That sentence had too many syllables! Apologize! As I was saying, I've discovered that this new vault is buried in the center of a large crater, and will only open, and I quote, once the champion of Pandora feeds it the blood of the ultimate coward. We at the Tour Corporation sincerely believe this is fucking awesome! It's so awesome that we're gonna set up a tournament to find us number one badass! If you want in, come to where the vault is buried, in the badass crater of Badassitude! That's not what the area is called! Badass crater of Badassitude! <sighs> This add-on introduces us to the gun manufacturer, Mr. Torg, and as you can tell, he's a mix between Hulk Hogan and a sports commentator who likes to swear a f***ing lot. He is, in my opinion, what makes this add-on the most funniest out of the three so far. Yes, it's easy, vulgar humour, but with him being censored by his sponsors on the Echo broadcast, it works out really well. I probably should have you up with the sponsor beforehand, but I'm f***ing disorganised as shit. It was busy suplexing a shark wearing a bolo tie when I should have been setting up sponsors. You may ask, who was wearing the bolo tie? You were the shark. Answer, yes. It's his attitude and disregard for safety that will cause you to have a big grin on your face whenever he says something to you. What you'll be doing in this add-on is arena-type battles combat along with the standard quest mechanics which you've been doing in the standard campaign already. By this point, these types of quests are getting unoriginal, but Gearbox decided to make some slight tweaks to some of the quests by making them repeatable. Each time you repeat it, it gets harder and harder, from shorter times to complete it or even higher level enemies to tackle. You eventually get to the point you need to be level 50 to even complete them. There is also a new Torg vending machine in the game for the new currency that drops off enemies. Here you can buy new Torg weaponry and customization gear for your characters. However, we run into the same problems that played Captain Scarlet. Reskin bandits and Hyperion technicians add Torg employees and new bandit guys. You may have noticed that everyone here is trying to kill you, Torg personnel included. You're welcome! I didn't want you to get bored so I was like, F*** it! Give everybody guns! We lost half of our workforce in three days, but who gives a fuck? The only new enemies you will encounter are bandits riding motorcycles, and they just die very quickly. The enemies you will face go up to level 32 this time, so you'll be overleveled again for this content. The environments you will explore in this add-on are junkyards, shanky towns, and a desert highway surrounding the badass crater of Badassitude. It looks good, but there's nothing new here either. However, all can be forgiven thanks to the great cast of characters you'll meet, who will push you through the campaign and see what happens next. You'll run into old faces including Mad Moxie and Tiny Tina. The writing is top-notch and makes some of the most simple go-here-and-kill-people quests interesting. My particular favourite quest is when a video game reviewer criticises Mr. Talk's favourite shooter up and he demands you to go kill him. P.S. I should say I'm not obligated to give a high score to this add-on, but I'm quite scared of Mr. Torg. As of the current three add-ons, this is the funniest so far. Is it just me, or does it seem like he's gonna betray the f*** out of you? Next up, Sir Hamlock's Big Game Hunting. Roll the trailer! Danger! Excitement! More stashes! It's time for another episode of Vault Hunter Adventures, featuring Sir Hammerlock. In this week's tale, our hard-boiled heroes travel to the savage continent of Agris. Their goal? To uncover the most exotic creatures Pandora has to offer, and give them the old one-two. But danger looms on the horizon for our swell swashbucklers. For while Handsome Jack may be gone, his legacy lives on. Improving on the past two add-ons, Sir Hamlock's Big Game Hunting hits it on the mark brilliantly and focuses on the more wildlife of Pandora and good old fashioned hunt. The add-on focuses on new environments, new enemy types and new challenges. The story is Sir Hamlock is off to take the players on a hunting weekend and it all starts well until the not too nefarious Professor Nakiyami sees you entering the area and suspects you're after him. I see you in my swamp little moths. I know why you're here. You want what's in my ship. You want my power. Um, pardon. We came here to hunt. Afraid we've never heard of you before. What? Really? Professor Nakayama? Hyperion Scout? I, I poisoned Atlas's CEO. Oh, that's nice. Good for... good for you. People are terrified of me. How do you not know... You guys 
guys are assholes. He taunts the player so much that Hamlock gets annoyed and suggests you just go and kill him so you can have a peaceful weekend hunting. It's a fun little story and Nakayama seems to be a really bad 60s cartoon villain from Johnny Quest or the Venture Brothers. I am the most ambivalent man alive! We've just crashed on Acris. My plan is set in motion and the Vault Hunter just arrived. Friggin' fortunately, however, the Vault Hunter survived every attempt I've made to kill him, which, uh, which, uh, kinda makes me kinda nervous. When not focusing on thwarting Nakayama's plans to clone Handsome Jack, you'll be hunting new wildlife that's been put into the game. From floating small creatures that bomb elemental damage upon you, as well as suicide babies to blow you up, to oversized armoured scorpions who will use a lot of poison damage versus you. The reskin bandits are back again, and this time they are wild savages that live in the swamp, but these reskins are more than meet the eyes, unlike in the last two add-ons, and actually have some new enemy types thrown into the mix. First up is the spear thrower who can pin you to a spot and reduce your running speed, and then the new enemy type that supports all these savages, the Witch Doctor. The Witch Doctors will change how you tackle these bandit caps since they have a multiple of support abilities to impair you, from levelling up the bandits, healing, magical attacks, debuffing the player and being a general pain in the arse. This add-on remedies the issue of you being overpowered and higher levels by making the enemy start at level 35 upwards, and also increase the maximum health and damage output they do, offering a bare bit of challenge again. By increasing the difficulty as well, it increases the chance of you replacing your gear finally. I managed to find replacements for all my guns, especially from the last boss Room's treasure trove. The repeatable quests introduced in Mr. Talk's add-on don't make a return, but there are multiple new challenges with two new end bosses to tackle for hardened vault hunters out there. There is also a new vehicle type to play around with, but Borderlands 2 vehicles have never been the fun aspect of the game, and they are just there to transport you from A to B. So Hamlock's Big Game Hunting is a fun DLC edition, with a bigger challenge for players who have been looking for it, and with a couple of interesting characters you'll encounter, you'll find this the best DLC to date. I still think Mr. Talks was funnier, however this is the type of DLC gearbox should be putting out. New enemies and a higher difficulty curve. This is what players want, a challenge and not being pampered to. The one thing I want to acknowledge is the music in each of the add-ons which adds to the overall feel of the environments and atmosphere and the voice acting is top notch as well. Hats off to Chris Rager who voices Mr. Talk. So the final verdict, I highly recommend players to get the season pass for Mr. Torg and Sir Hamlock's add-on, and going off on how the quality of these add-ons have improved each time, Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon's Kink, which accidentally got leaked last week by the development team, should be pretty awesome. We've been hinted that this DLC will have a Dungeons and Dragons theme, but who can say what the developers have got up their sleeve? There is no better time than now to get into Borderlands 2, and with a new melee focus Psycho Vault Hunter being added to the mix soon, it may be worth picking up Borderlands 2 again. Come back to my channel at the end of June when Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon's Keep comes out. I will hopefully be level 50 by then and in true Vault Hunter mode so I can see how challenging the game gets in that difficulty setting. If you enjoyed this review of the DLC, check out the other videos on my channel and subscribe. Bye bye!